Hi ladies, it's Beth from Be Styled and I just went live on my personal page by accident. That was fun. Didn't get very far and I think I deleted it, but yikes. Anyway, hi, it's me. I'm here. I'm double checking that I'm in the right place now. Facebook, I tell you, I do not lie when I say they change things every week. Every week it's different. I always go on live on my laptop and today it was this whole new setup and I couldn't get it to work. But I'm now live in the Just Get Dressed group and not on my personal Facebook page because I don't want to be there. But anyway, hello, breathe, relax. How are you ladies? Thanks for joining. Let me know that you're here if you want. Um, I thought we could do a little question and answer session if you have any style questions or any questions at all. I'm going to try to look at the camera and at my laptop if you have any questions. Um, I'm about to hit publish on a Facebook or not on a blog post um, about an analogy that I use a lot about how getting dressed and making dinner are similar. Um, as you know, if you know me, I do not like to make dinner, but I do like to get dressed. Um, but there are a lot of similarities between the two activities and by when I say making dinner I'm talking about everything involved in shopping for food making dinner and that kind of thing and when I'm talking about getting dressed I'm talking about creating outfits and putting clothes on your body every day there are a lot of similarities um, and the main one that I um, focus on in this week's um, post is the importance, again, say it all the time, of a list and a plan. And I talk about how my normal, or I'm trying to get better at it, but oftentimes I go off to the grocery store or to Trader Joe's or Idlewild, our local kind of farm stand on steroids, and I go thinking, okay, we need food because the kids tell me, mom, we have no food, or, or mom, all our food is expired. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one I get a lot, my kids and their friends think I have all expired food in the house. Not true, but that's what they say. Anyway, so off I go to the store and I shop and I buy things and things catch my eye and I'm like, oh, that looks good or I read about that somewhere. I saw somebody uses that ingredient. I'll throw it in, I buy it, I spend $100. I go home, I carry the bags in, I unload it all, I cram it into the fridge, I cram it into the cabinets and it's four o'clock and they come home or they're home and they're all like, oh, what's for dinner? And I have not a clue, not a clue. Um, have you done this? I know there are a lot of you, probably a whole lot of you who don't do this, who, you know, do your grocery shopping in a very intentional way. You have your great lists, you have, you know, maybe it's on your phone and you've got meal plans and you know, five days in advance what's for dinner and that is who I strive to be someday because that works. What I do does not work because then I come home and I have things like, like I said in the blog post, you know, artichoke dip and cookie batter or cookie dough or no cookie spread. What's that stuff Trader Joe's? I found my, that in my cabinet. I'm like, what is this stuff? Somebody told me it was good. Cookie butter it's called. Well, you can't make dinner with cookie butter. Um, you could make dessert maybe, but I don't do that very often anyway. I'm lucky if I make dinner. But anyway, the comparison is, um, what I, so that's an example of what I do when I did that kind of shopping is sort of what I call recreational shopping, where I'm just going to the store and buying stuff, okay? The comp comparison, something that, that I also do, I don't do as much, but um, I know a lot of us do, is you know the, when you're home online and you're clicking and dogs, people, and you see you know that brand new top that looks so cute on the blogger and you click and you buy and it's so easy. Michael, can you shut the dogs up for me, hon? Um, the same idea. You know you have all those funky fun things that caught your eye and then when it's time to get dressed, you're like, oh, I don't know what to wear. I can't get dressed. It's the same idea, okay? Um, recreational shopping. It's easy to do, especially now when we are all home. Um, when we're all home all the time and we're on the computer more and we're not in the, because when we're in the stores, it happens too. There are certain stores that are easier to recreational shop at. Target, big recreational shopping spot. TJ Maxx, Home Goods, so easy to do. 
um, and you know you buy all the stuff and you don't know what to do with it so um, but you know when you go to the grocery store and you buy your you know your chicken breasts and your you know salmon fillets or your romaine lettuce that's not recreational shopping you know just like when you go and you buy a great pair of black pants or denim jeans that fit you perfectly that are maybe more expensive um, but they, they fit you perfectly, they flatter your body, that's not recreational shopping. That is smart shopping, that's strategic shopping. So with all the sales that are coming out, August is notorious for sales. And with this August especially, they're gonna be giving stuff away out there, ladies. So um, I want us all to be careful and to commit to not getting caught up. I, I need to do it too. but. I'm going to try to take the month of August and you know, it's not a formal shopping freeze, but kind of, I'm going to challenge myself to, to, to not buy the, you know, the cookie butter and the artichoke um, dip. That being said, you know, the Nordstrom sales coming out, if you're interested in shopping that, I'm not doing a whole lot on that this year, um, just because of the way it's structured and because honestly, you know, I think unless you're one of the um, insiders or, you know, the, one of the high-level Nordstrom people, shoppers, you're based on your spending. Um, I'm afraid that when it is open to the rest of us, everything's going to be sold out anyway. So if, if you are one of those people, knock yourself out, get your wish list going. And even now, even, even for the rest of us, it's probably a good idea to, to start a wish list because maybe things will still be available. But I'm skeptical based on prior years, so I'm not spending a whole lot of time and energy on it. Um, again, that being said, if you need those things, those you know, chicken breasts and romaine lettuce and pasta or, or quinoa or whatever your grain of choice is, which you know, the analogy is you know the black pants, the denim, the denim, the you know the great blazer. If you need those kind of things, if you're missing those really timeless classic basics, if you're missing those. Make a list. I will help you, and 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 look at the sales and see if you can find them. Chances are Nordstrom's might be the only sale that you're gonna have any luck with for those because all the other retailers are gonna be giving away summer stuff. Let's, let's face it, you know, Nordstrom's the only one who has a sale on new fall things. So it is a great time to look at boots, shoes, things like that, but, but have a list and a plan. No willy-nilly shopping, have a list and a plan. And in this blog post that I'm going to publish today, um, I actually gave a collection of items. They're all, they are all from Nordstrom. Some are in the sale, some are not. Most, there's a lot of things on sale at Nordstrom now, separate from the anniversary sale. Um, but they are a collection of examples of these kind of chicken breast type items, pasta type items, essential basics. They're not the fun and exciting, trendy things that you feel like you gotta have but they're the things that will let you actually get dressed in the morning. <laughs> and when you do buy those trendy things, you'll actually have something to wear with it. You know, you'll have the black pants or the jeans that, that you can wear three times a week with the trendy shirt, shirt that you bought, you know? So um, I will be publishing that and it is kind of, and it's, it's kind of in line with what I'm creating for the fall, which is sort of a back to basics, create your own essential list and then talk about adding the trends and the accent pieces, the spices, if you will, to make great outfits. But back to basics, especially given where we are right now with the world, it is not time to be going out, I don't think. If, if, if you want to, knock yourself out, that's great. But for me, I am not gonna go spend a lot of money on all the latest and greatest, newest fall clothes. My lifestyle these days just don't warrant it. I'm not going out as much, if at all. <laughs> and I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon, unfortunately. So the, my focus and the focus of my fall program is gonna be creating your list of basic essentials. Because, um, you know, I have my list of 10 that I've had for years, my 10 items. But the important thing is, is we need to create a list that's appropriate for you. And an example from my blog post is, let's say a white shirt is on the list because a white shirt is gonna be on just about every essentials list, okay? So let's say somebody tells you, you need to have a, a, you know, a white button down shirt. You know, the crisp white button down shirt, classic. It appears on 99% of those essentials lists. Um, that doesn't, it's not on mine, mine is just a general white shirt. But if it, 
you know, a lot of people will say you need to have the button down shirt. Well, let's say you have a very large chest or you're sensitive to, you know, crisp material and you hate anything that's too structured or it's just not your style. You're not, you're not a button up kind of girl. You're not going to go. I don't want you to go buy that white button up shirt just because my list or somebody else's list says you need to check this off your list. You need a white button up shirt. Okay. Um, but if you love that look, and let's say you you're, let's say you have a large chest, you love that look. Let's find a button-up shirt that gives you that look that you love without the crisp, you know, and without the buttons bulging um, when you try to close them. There are options. Um, another example: let's say let's say you don't look great in white. Maybe stark white is not your best color. Maybe you look better in ivory. So you do the set that type of shirt in ivory or off-white. You don't it doesn't have to be stark white all the time if it doesn't suit you. So my point being, the key is to find the, the basic essentials, those pantry basics that work for you, for your body, for your aesthetic, your taste, your coloring, and all that. And focus on making sure those are in order all year round. And then have so much fun. We'll have so much fun finding, you know, inexpensive, less expensive, because those items, yes, you are going to spend more money on. You're, you know, I would recommend you spend 80% of your budget on those kind of pieces, those kind of basics. And then 20% of your budget on the seasonal accents and trends and the fun, shiny, bright, cool things that, that make those outfits or make those basics sing and give them personality that's, that's in line with your personality, not my personality or Susie Lou's personality, but your personality. Um, and that's how you you, you get dressed. That is how you just get dressed. You have your basics, and then you bring in your personality with the uh, with the add-ons. It's it's as simple as that. But it's not always easy to, to um, it's not always easy to to pull off. And I think it's because of the willy-nilly shopping. It's just why it's why it's hard for me to pull off dinner because of my willy-nilly shopping. So um, it's it works the same way. Um, so that's what I'm working on, and my, my message for you today is to beware of the sales. You know, shop them if you like, have fun, you know, if it's, if it's something you do for fun, but be smart about it. When, you, when you're about to hit that complete sale, you know, the final checkout, hit the button, ask yourself questions. Am I going to be happy a month from now that I bought this $20 top? Is it... Is there something else I'd rather do with that $20? Is that $20 top something that I maybe already have in my closet in another color or another similar color or another similar style and I, it's not gonna really add anything to my life or to my wardrobe? Um, if, it, if, it, if you don't have anything like it and you love it and it's that great neckline you know, that you love and it's a color that you love that you're missing, knock yourself out. But be smart about it and take a minute or two or three